during this uh, lecture sessions on static uh, inventory problems under uh, uncertainty uh, i will be now referring to the tebyshev and other inequalities and uh, i will explain all uh, application of all these inequalities for the given uh, static inventory problems with a number of uh, numerical examples we have already uh, mentioned uh, the causes of using uh, such inequalities and uh, uh, these uh, inequalities are uh, are well known and uh, are used for uh, many kinds of uh, the problems and uh, as you are aware that uh, uh, uh under inventory management uh, systems uh you come across uh, various kinds of uh, uh the situations constraints and uh, uh i should say that these are binding constraints and all and uh, so and many a time uh, you come across uh, uh, situations which are really uncertain that means uh, uh, the unpredictable uh say say the occurrences of many sorts of events and uh, which uh, uh, would directly affect uh, the performance of the inventory control system so uh, many a time uh, uh, these factors are uh, are considered as uh, the noise factors or or so the nuisance variables so there could be uh, many reasons that why you face uh, an uncertain situations so this is a very 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 important topic that means whenever you try to formulate a problem uh when that means uh, we are trying to with a formulate a real world problem the so called real world problem and uh, as you may be knowing that uh, uh, though we are saying that the, the there must could be some assumptions related to the type of distribution but it is always stated that uh, the true distribution is never known i repeat true distribution is never known what is uh, known is uh, some sort of uh, uh, say the assumptions related to the type of distributions uh, under uh, given say the level of significance so uh, so keeping in mind this concept we might say that almost all the problems you face uh, are of say the problems under uncertainty and uh, that's why you have no other alternative to use uh, inequality expressions even if we know that uh, uh, the results uh, may not be that perfect but in a given situation uh that's imperfect at least some decisions you can take so now i will this given uh, say this background uh, information now i am uh, going to discuss the tebyshev's uh, inequalities and uh, other inequalities also now tebyshev's inequality you will find if you go through the literature you will find that these inequalities is available in different forms some of the useful forms that we can use for problem formulation in our case are as follows okay so the first one is probability that the difference between y that means uh, a particular value of uh, you know say random variable discrete or continuous random variable the difference between a particular value of the variable and the mean that is z bar is greater than or equals to k times s what is s s is the standard deviation so the probability that this difference y difference between y and z bar is greater than or equals to k times s is always less than or equals to 1 upon k square 
okay so the small case square where y is the random variable demand in this case z bar is the mean of demand distribution s is the standard deviation of the demand distribution and k is the multiplying factor so this is uh, you know uh, this is referred to as the tevishev's inequality but uh, it's it's not in a general form in the sense that the information up to z bar and s that means up to the variance or the standard deviation is made available so what do you do and uh, beyond s you don't have any information related to a demand distribution so what do you do you use this inequality for problem formulation and subsequently the uh, determination of the decision variable so i repeat probability that the difference between y minus z bar greater than equal greater than or equals to k times s is less than or equals to 1 upon k square okay so uh, the maximum value of this probability is 1 upon k square this inequality you may use when information up to standard deviation is made available this point already i have mentioned so you are proceeding systematically one by one that means first you try to get the value of mean and then uh, you try to get the value of standard deviation and then you are in a position to use the tevishev's inequality that means the expression uh, one the next expression of uh, the tevishev's inequality is like this probability that the difference between y and z bar is greater than or equals to k times rth root of lambda r is less than or equals to 1 upon k to the power r so we just uh, make a note that this is uh, uh, the tevishev's inequality expression in most general form so now <coughs> obviously lambda r you know the lambda r is uh, the absolute moment of order r around the mean so already you know uh, uh, the expressions for lambda r so it is uh, the rth root of lambda r that means absolute moment of order r around mean and already we have referred to the expression for this particular absolute moment is it okay in the uh, the previous lecture session so as i have already mentioned that uh, this uh, the inequality tevishev's inequality has a close resemblance with the absolute moment of order r around mean is it okay so you have you have already understood the absolute moment of order r around x and uh, and then automatically uh, you can uh, explain or you can interpret uh, the tevishev's inequality expression for example this is just an example lambda 2 equals to m2 equal to s square because the 2 is uh, the even number so the moment and the absolute moment around mean so they are same because for the even order for the even order moments and this is uh, the standard notation we use that is uh, the sample variance s square so this is the second expression is the most uh, general expression the third expression is probability that y minus z bar greater than or equals to k times s is less than or equal to 1 upon k square plus 1 just uh, you make a note that this is just a difference it's not the difference between y and z bar that means y is what is the uh, y minus z bar okay so uh, that is just uh, the one way 
you can say that the difference we have computed. It's not uh, positive or negative. Okay, so here the deviation from mean is just on one direction only. So in that case, this inequality expression, that means on the right hand side of the inequality, right hand side of the inequality changes to 1 upon k square plus 1. So this is the third expression of the inequality. So the first one you can use, the second one also you can use, third one also you can use. So we will uh, cite several numerical examples. Then the fourth one is probability that the absolute value of y minus z bar that means the difference between y minus z bar probability that the difference between y and z bar is greater than or equals to k times s is lambda 4 minus lambda 2 square divided by lambda 4 plus k to the power 4 lambda 2 square minus 2 k square lambda 2 square which is which is same as lambda 4 this is s to the power 4 because lambda 2 is the m2 is equals to s square so that's why it is s to the power 4 and this is lambda 4 k to the power 4 lambda 2 square is s4 s is the standard deviation s to the power 4 minus 2 k square to s to the power 4 so either you uh, use lambda 2 square or you can use s to the power 4 when the standard deviation is known. That means uh, uh, here uh, you must know the m4 that means information up to m4 uh, is made available with you and when the m4 is known obviously lambda 4 also you can compute and uh, when s square is known s to the power 4 also you can compute. It's clear? Now the next expression is the fifth one that is probability that absolute y minus z bar absolute is greater than equals to k s is less than equals to gamma 2 plus 2 divided by k square minus 1 whole square plus gamma 2 plus 2. So what is gamma 2? Gamma 2 is essentially what is gamma 2 is the kurtosis of the distribution and for computing kurtosis you uh, need to have M4. Okay, so when M4 uh, estimate is there, you can calculate uh, gamma 2. And when gamma 2, up to gamma 2, you have the information. Why don't we use this particular inequality? Okay. At the next stage, what do you try to do? That means now we bring in the concept of mode. So what is mode? You know, uh, this is just one of the measures of the central tendency of a given data set. Now, these, uh, there are uh, three measures of central uh, tendency. The first one is the mean, second one is uh, uh, the median and the third one is the mode. That means mode is uh, value with the maximum frequency. So this, uh, you know, the definition is known to you. Now. When uh, the z bar is known and the mode is also known and s is, s is also known, now how do you define w? w is z bar minus mode, there could be a difference between say the mean and the mode and this difference you express in standard deviation units. So that is why it is z bar minus mode divided by s. So this difference between z bar and mode you express in standard deviation units. So now when you have uh, these expressions, so in terms of w, you can again uh, express this inequality, inequality, Tebyshev's inequality. So what is this? That means the probability, the absolute, the uh, y minus z bar, the difference between y minus z bar, probability that y, uh, the difference between y and z bar is greater than equals to k s is 4 by 9 into 1 plus w square divided by k minus absolute w whole square for k greater than equals greater than absolute w 
Okay, so this, these are the different expressions. Obviously, you may raise a question that, sir, how, how do you get this uh, expression? Obviously, my suggestion is that uh, there is all the derivation of this particular inequality expression, these derivations, all these derivations are there in the textbook. So, I have referred to uh, a number of textbooks. So, the please go through them and you try to uh, get get there the proofs. Okay. The last one, that means the seventh one, again uh, you may refer to. Now, this particular inequality expression was proposed by Gauss, the great mathematician, way back in 1821. So, this is the seventh one, that is uh, the probability that y minus m0. Now, the here, he has changed the base till now the your reference point was z bar that is why it is y minus z bar. Now, the reference point could be m 0. So, what is capital M 0? Capital M 0 is the mode. So, I am measuring central tendency with mode. So, that is the case not by mean. So, in that case this is the probability that the difference between y minus y and m 0 so, greater than equals to k times t. That means, it is the second moment around mode. Is it ok? It is it's not uh, uh, the second moment around mean. In that case, it is uh, it is the variance. Ok. But here, you have to change it to t square. That means, your base is the moment, not the mean. So, it just cannot be k into t. So, I must use certain other notations that is k into t. Now, this probability is less than equals to 4 by 9 k square. Okay, so, just uh, keep in mind uh, that this particular inequality also is you can use when your reference point is the mode and uh, the t square is the second moment about mode. So, what is the uh, you know uh, the relationship between the second moment around mode about mode is equal to the variance that is the s square plus m 0 minus z bar whole square m 0 minus z bar whole square. Is it ok? So, this is the expression so you remember and the eighth one there is another inequality expression that is also an extension of the previous one ok as proposed by Gauss that is the probability that the difference between y and m 0 is greater than or equals to k times fourth root of t 4. That means, it is basically the fourth moment around the mode, fourth moment around mode less than equals to this probability will be always less than equals to 16 by 25 into k to the power k to the power 4 where T 4 equals to fourth moment around mode and this fourth moment around mode is a relationship with M 4, M 3, M 2 and M 0, M 4, M 3, M 2 as well as M 0 and Z bar. So, this is the relationship you have then this way you define T 4 is it ok. So, there is a relationship between moment uh, say the fourth moment around mode and uh, and the corresponding say is a function of m m2 m3 m4 z bar and m0 and m and, and m o okay so these are the uh, the eight uh, inequality uh, say the expressions uh, we have suggested or we have included now, what do you need to do? That means, given a problem, first you need to go through the problem statement and then you have to select uh, a particular inequality expression. Now, obviously, there could be uh, uh, different types of problems and uh, the depending on the type of the problem and the type of data you have, you select a particular inequality expression. So, depending on the kinds of 
data made available that is very very important a particular inequality expression can be used for problem formulation so the so the first what you try to do the problem should be uh, clearly understood and then uh, you formulate the problem and while you formulate the problem you use one or more of these inequality expressions and then uh, once the problem is formulated then you suggest uh, uh, the methodology for its solution a number of illustrative examples will be presented now okay so it's better that uh, uh, you come to know the application of all these inequality expressions one by one so that i will do so you will come to know the usefulness of these inequality expressions is it okay one important point i should highlight with the use of these inequalities the solution you get is not the best one but a satisfying one i repeat the solution you get is not the best one but a satisfying one this point already i have uh, I've already elaborated that means uh, you need a solution i have already mentioned the importance of uh, say uh, so the inventory management systems in any organization and essentially inventory management system uh, deals with uh, the determination of a particular so the inventory control systems or inventory control or sometimes it is the order ordering policies uh, for uh, say uh, for all sorts of items inventory items as listed so obviously you know uh, you cannot wait for getting the best possible solution so whatever the data you have you try to uh, say use this data to get a solution so that's why you know the solution in majority of the cases may not be the best one but definitely you may call it a satisfying one it serves the given purpose and uh, as of now the distribution of the demand is not known and the solution of the problem is overdue is it okay you can't wait for uh, you cannot say that uh, i first uh, get me uh, the first uh, the distribution or the demand distribution uh, say probability distributions of demand and then only you'll get the solution so the problem is overdue a typical situation with respect to many many inventory items so now i'll be referring to example 1 if c is the cost of one unit that means it could be a purchase cost okay that means uh, the unit is purchased from outside or it may so happen that uh, this could be the production cost that means it is an inside supply case you are already aware of so there are two situations you come across either uh, the inside supply case or the outside supply case or the given inventory item so if c is cost of one unit and capital k this notation we are using it is uh, it is fixed under stock cost determine the order quantity x using the inequality expression 1 so capital k fixed under stock cost that means uh, uh, the cost of under stock uh, almost remains fixed that means irrespective of the number of units short so you have the data and you can prove that this condition holds so if you have uh, Uh, say so the values for the small c and capital k then what do you do you if your order quantity is x so with respect to x the expected total cost efx is given by these notations we have been using efx equals to c into x plus k the probability that y is greater than equals to x that means this is uh, the understock uh, under stock probability that means if the actual uh, uh, the demand is is greater than greater than or equals to 
the order quantity obviously it is a stock out situation so what is this probability now x equals to z bar plus k into x so k is the multiplying factor k times s and hence probability that y is greater than equals to x equals to probability is greater than y probability that y is greater than equals to z plus k into s that means x is replaced with z bar plus k s so it is probability that y minus z bar greater than equals to k s which is less than or equals to probability that the difference between y minus z bar greater than or equals to k into s and this is essentially the tevishev's inequality in its original form less than or equals to 1 upon k square so now uh, what do you get that means that expression for e of x becomes z c into z bar plus c into k s c k s plus capital k and the probability that y is greater than or equals to x is replaced with with the use of tevishev's inequality one it replaced with one upon small k square assuming the worst case equality okay so it is essentially the tevishev's inequality less than equals to that means worst case is 1 upon k square so for minimization of cost del del k of efx that means the partial derivative with respect to x you set it equals to 0 this is the necessary condition so it becomes cs minus 2 capital k divided by k to the power 3 so or small k equals to uh, say the root of cube root of 2 into capital k by cs so if z bar equals to 50 s equals to 5 c equals to 5 and capital k is 1000 is it okay this is just an illustrative example what is the value of k so the value of k will be 4.31 and so hence the order quantity x is 50 plus 4.31 into 5 that is 71.55 approximately 72 if we use the inequality expression 3 we get efx equals to c z bar plus c k x plus k capital k divided by k square plus 1 so you please refer to the inequality expression 3 that means uh, the right hand side Uh, uh, is one upon k square plus one. So, so it so these expressions we have used, and what do you get if you go for minimization of cost? You take the partial derivative with respect to small k because the small k is is the unknown, and you determine the value of small k. So this is the expression you get. Set it equals to zero. So the resulting equation is this. So solving the equation for k. we get k equals to 4.15 now my request is that uh, uh, to you is uh, try to get uh, uh, the solution procedure for uh, for this particular equation so we have followed that procedure and we have found that the value of k is 4.15 and hence x equals to 50 plus 4.15 into 5 that is 70.75 that is 71 for both the above cases we have followed minimax criterion but over probability distributions so this is uh, uh, the example 2 in case we use the inequality in most general form so what do you try to do that means efx equal to c z bar plus c k r th root of lambda r plus k by k to the power r so same approach we follow and we get the cost minimization for with cost minimization we get the expression for the small k optimal value that is r plus 1th root of r capital k divided by c into say rth root of lambda r so these are the values that means up to fourth moment the values are available that is uh, up to fourth moment 1875 suppose uh, if the demand distribution is normal then we have the value of k is it okay so the expression for small k is already known and hence the order quantity is 50 plus 2.61 into 6. Point into 2.2.61 into 6.58 that is 67.17 okay so 
this is the expression for the exponent 2. So, we have uh, just explained uh, a few cases uh, of, of application of Debeshev's inequality. So, such uh, examples we will provide in the subsequent lecture sessions also. Thank you. <coughs>